subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 1st of March. Indian student killed in shelling in Ukraine's Kharkiv embassy asks the stranded citizens to leave Kiev urgently. Rights groups call for repeal of Pakistan's draconian cyber law. And Taliban restrict Afghans going abroad raises concern from US and UK. And now for all the details. An Indian student was killed in shelling in the eastern Ukrainian city of Kharkiv, India's foreign ministry confirmed on Tuesday, hours after the Indian embassy advised its citizens to urgently leave capital Kyiv amid the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. An Indian student was killed in shelling in Ukraine's Kharkiv on Tuesday morning, India's foreign ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakhchi confirmed. Hours after the Indian embassy advised citizens to leave capital Kyiv urgently amid the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, is being pounded by heavy shelling by Russian forces, reports suggested. Bakhchi said India's foreign secretary is calling in ambassadors of Russia and Ukraine to reiterate demand for urgent safe passage for Indian nationals who are still in conflict zones. This comes as four Indian ministers travel to Ukraine's neighbouring countries to better coordinate efforts as part of government's evacuation plan Operation Ganga to bring back stranded citizens from border points of war on Ukraine. Around eight flights have brought back over a thousand Indian nationals since Saturday, officials said. We are happy that they are back. There is still work to be done. There are still thousands of our countrymen out there. We will take out. That's the determination of our country. Earlier on Monday, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired high-level meeting on the Ukraine crisis and evacuation efforts and said India will send in humanitarian aid to Ukraine's borders. He called for the Indian Air Force to also join the evacuation efforts under Operation Ganga. And moving on, rights groups Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch have called for repeal of the recent amendment by Pakistan to its Cyber Crimes Act, terming the legislation the latest move in a concerted campaign to restrict freedom of expression and stifle dissent. The Pakistan government's recent amendment to its Cyber Crimes Act is the latest in a concerted campaign to restrict freedom of expression and stifle dissent. Rights groups Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch have said, calling for its repeal. With the promulgation of the Prevention of Electronic Crimes Amendment Act or PECA Ordinance 2022, imprisonment against defamation has been enhanced from three years to five. Calling it a move to curb fake news, it allows anyone from the public to become a complainant against defamation of any public office holder. Nadia Rahman, acting deputy regional director at Amnesty International, said PECA has been used to silence freedom of expression on the pretext of combating fake news, cybercrime and misinformation. It particularly endangers journalists, human rights defenders and political opponents who run the risk of prosecution for merely doing their jobs, she said. Patricia Gossman, Asia Associate Director at Human Rights Watch, said the new amendments will further embed violations of basic rights with a thin veneer of legality. Meanwhile, opposition leader in the National Assembly, Shehbaz Sharif, said on Monday that the joint opposition has resolved to seek repeal of the amended law in the parliament under Rule 145, terming it an exhibition of authoritarian, fascist and undemocratic thinking of PM Imran Khan's government. Sharif supported the decision of the Media Joint Action Committee to challenge the ordinance in the court. More news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday announced a number of economic relief measures in an address to the nation amid the ongoing economic crisis in the country. The prices of petroleum products were slashed by Rs 10 and the electricity tariff was dropped by 5 rupees per unit. 
Opposition leaders credited their pressure tactics for the relief measures announced by Imran Khan. Pakistan and Prime Minister Imran Khan in a televised address on Monday announced the slashing of petroleum products priced by rupees 10 per litre and electricity tariff by rupees 5 per unit as part of a series of measures to bring some relief to the public. Prime Minister Khan said that there would be no increase in the petrol, diesel and electricity charges until the next budget. His address to the nation came at a time when the opposition parties have mounted pressure on his Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf led government by threatening to send it packing with the no confidence motion amid rising inflation in the country. Today, I want to hear you a very happy that in the case of 10 we have made a decision that we are petrol and diesel today. Khan's announcements are seen as clear deviation from the International Monetary Fund's bailout package wherein the government has already agreed to increase tax rates on the petroleum products. Opposition leaders in the country credited their pressure tactics for the relief measures announced by Khan. PPP, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Monday termed Khan's move as a result of his party's long march and no trust motion to oust the government. Mifta Ismail, former finance minister and Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, PMLN leader, said that those who advised not to worry now looked worried because of the no-trust move against the prime minister. Opposition parties, PPP and the PMLN, are reportedly planning to bring a no-confidence motion against the Imran Khan government this week. And in news from Afghanistan, the Taliban administration has announced that it would restrict Afghans from leaving the country under certain circumstances. The restrictions have provoked strong reactions. United Kingdom's envoy also criticized the move amid fears it could hamper ongoing evacuation efforts. The Taliban administration spokesperson Zebuhullah Mujahid at a media conference on Sunday said that Afghans would not be allowed to leave the country unless they had a clear destination and that women could not travel overseas for study without a male guardian. The restrictions imposed by the Islamic Emirate on Afghan citizens travelling abroad have provoked strong reactions. Hugo Shorter, the UK charged the affairs for Afghanistan in a tweet said, these would be unacceptable restrictions on freedom of movement. I call on the Taliban to clarify their remarks urgently, he added. A US State Department spokesperson said late on Monday that they were engaging with the Taliban over the issue. Taliban spokesman Zebuhullah said the travel restrictions would apply to Afghans who worked with NATO and American forces, but did not elaborate under what, if any, circumstances they would be able to evacuate. The Taliban have been carrying out extensive house searches around the Afghan capital, according to residents, a policy the group spokesman said was to detect criminal activity, but that some Western diplomats said had targeted ordinary citizens. Since the Islamist group took over the country in August, observers have warned of emerging signs of a crackdown on dissent and reprisals against former security force members and activists. Fears for the safety of vocal opponents of the Taliban and prominent women have risen since the Islamist group took over the country, with international agencies and governments expressing alarm over the disappearances of several female activists in recent months. The Taliban denies targeted reprisals and says it is investigating reports of violence and disappearances. In news from Nepal, CPN Maoist Centre Chairman Pushpa Kamal Dahel has expressed satisfaction over the parliamentary ratification of the US-funded MCC, the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact. Dahel told reporters on Monday that his party voted in favour of MCC Compact after initially opposing the move as the parliament ratified it along with an interpretative declaration which would have a binding effect on the United States. The US has pledged a grant of 500 million US dollars for the construction of electricity transmission lines and road upgradation project as part of the agreement. CPN Mao Center had also held days of street protest and warned of quitting the ruling coalition against 
against MCC, expressing fears that it would undermine Nepal's sovereignty. The binding declaration has saved the constitution and the country, the hell said. And the winter sport of skiing is giving a boost to tourism and employment in the hill station of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Many youths in the region are working as coaches to give skiing training to the tourists and locals from across the world who are visiting Gulmarg to enjoy the sport amid its snow-covered peaks. The hill station of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory has emerged as a favorite ski destination of people from all over the world. The thrilling ski season is the time when the sleepy town turns into a carnival of skiers as enthusiasts from across the globe visit Gulmarg to learn and enjoy the sport amid its snow-covered peaks. Many youths are working as coaches in the region to give skiing training to the tourists and locals. They charge as per the requirements of the enthusiast, which in turn is helping in generating employment. I'm here, I'm learning with an amazing uh, teacher, very patient, very, uh, very good teacher. And this place is beautiful to come to ski. Unlike most ski resorts, Gulmark is an off-piece ski paradise and has about three to four groomed slopes that are long and wide. It is also popular for snowboarding, skating, sledge rides, gondola johns and cable car rides. And devotees across India and Nepal on Tuesday offered prayers and performed rituals to celebrate the festival of Mahashivratri, the night Hindu Lord Shiva married his consort goddess Parvati, the daughter of Himalaya. Thousands of devotees across India on Tuesday celebrated the Hindu festival of Mahashivratri or Shiva's great night, the night Hindu god of destruction Lord Shiva married goddess Parvati the daughter of Himalaya. last we have because of COVID. We are doing this year. We are in the line. We are very happy that we will get the blessing of Mahashivratri is celebrated on the new moon day in the month of Magh between February and March, according to the Hindu calendar. Devotees offered flowers, leaves, water and milk to Shiva Lingas, a phallus representation of Lord Shiva, and chanted prayers in the temples. Meanwhile, similar scenes were witnessed in neighboring country of Nepal, where scores of Hindu holy men and devotees thronged the famous Pashupati Nath temple, dedicated to Lord Shiva in capital Kathmandu. Mahashivratri is also famed for freely smoking marijuana, which is classified as a narcotic. It is believed that on this day, the stars in the northern hemisphere are at the most optimum positions to help raise a person's spiritual energy. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian student killed in shelling in Ukraine's Kharkiv. Embassy asks stranded citizens to leave Kiev urgently. Rights groups call for repeal of Pakistan's draconian cyber law. And Taliban restrict Afghans going abroad raises concern from US and UK. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.